everybody, it's Dr. Brian Mole, the diabetes coach, and this video is going to be all about the NMR lipoprotein profile or the advanced lipid test, sometimes called fractionated lipids. There are a variety of different tests that do something similar, whether you're going to LabCorp or Quest Labs or through Boston Heart. But essentially what we're talking about here is looking at not just the standard lipid panel with total cholesterol, LDL. LDL cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, triglycerides, and so forth, but looking at the fractionated lipids, looking at the particle numbers, the size of the lipoproteins, things like LDL particle number, number of small dense LDL particles, again, particle number and size, and the lipoprotein insulin resistance score, the LPIR score. So we're going to talk about all of those things. We're going to look at some examples of of some of my patients and clients from over the years, and then talk about the importance of getting a test like this done to evaluate not only your cardiovascular risk, but metabolic health, insulin resistance, risk for type 2 diabetes, and other metabolic health problems. You may or may not be familiar with this, but again, a standard lipid panel is checking cholesterol levels. So total amount of cholesterol and then the amount of cholesterol in LDL particles and HDL particles, as well as triglycerides. And while it's not a useless test, it really doesn't track all that well with cardiovascular risk and insulin resistance. Now, there are a few things we can look for. For example, we do typically see higher triglycerides in insulin-resistant people. There's generally more liver fat, and that will cause the export of more fats. We'll see triglyceride levels high. Generally, we'll see LDLC or LDL cholesterol levels high, but not always. And we'll usually see a low HDL cholesterol level. But again, those are very crude measurements and don't track all that well with metabolic health and cardiovascular risk. One of the main reasons is that there are two different or several different LDL patterns, what they call pattern A and pattern B, which you can see here. And you can have the same amount of cholesterol in the LDL particles, but if you've got the large buoyant pattern A LDL particles, they tend to represent something different than the small dense LDL particles. And those small particles are the ones that should be getting cleared from the liver. So what happens is your liver exports fat and cholesterol, as well as immune cytokines and certain fat-soluble vitamins inside lipoprotein particles, and they're called VLDL particles. They then drop off the nutrients and fat and some cholesterol, the immune components to the various areas of the body that need it, and then they get smaller and smaller and smaller and eventually become LDL and then even smaller LDL particles small dense LDL particles. And then those should be cleared by the liver. So if we see a lot of those small dense LDL particles, that tells us that the liver is not doing a very good job of clearing those. That's associated with insulin resistance and high amounts of fat and cholesterol in the liver. Like the liver is saying, we don't want any more of that. Whereas the large LDL particles are usually a sign that your liver is producing more of these lipoproteins, and it might be doing that just because you're eating more fat or you're trafficking more fat through your bloodstream because you're on, for example, a lower carb, higher fat diet, or you're fasting or something like that where you're burning more fat than typical. So the large LDL particles don't tend to be that problematic unless, of course, they get up really high, which we'll talk about. It's those small particles that we really worry about. So researchers have studied this quite a bit. And there's something called discordance where the numbers don't match or they don't line up the way you would think. So if you look down here at the low risk, we have a low LDL particle number and a low LDL cholesterol level. And everybody pretty much agrees that that is low risk. Over here on the top left, we see high risk. This is where LDL particle number and LDL cholesterol levels are high. And again, every 
everybody pretty much agrees that that is a high risk situation. But these other two corners are where it gets a little tricky. So here in the bottom left, we see a low LDL cholesterol level, or this could be in the normal range. And then we see a high LDL particle number. And sometimes we see this with our clients and patients. And this actually is risky. So this can get missed often by physicians just running a standard lipid panel. But we oftentimes see this associated with diabetes and insulin resistance, where we see that high LDL particle number. And the research shows that this is high risk. It increases your risk for cardiovascular disease quite a bit. And then the other one where there's some discordance is where we'll see a high LDL-C up here in the upper right. So the LDL cholesterol is high, but the LDL particle number is low or in the normal range. And this, according to research scientists, is actually a low risk situation. So even though your LDL cholesterol level is high and you might get flagged and put on a cholesterol medication, the risk is actually low with the low LDL particle number. So what this should tell you is running a standard lipid panel is not enough. You really do need the LDL particle number or at least what's called an ApoB, apolipoprotein B, which does correlate pretty well with LDL particle number. ApoB is a protein tag that's on all of the atherogenic lipoproteins like VLDL, IDL, and LDL. And it does track, again, pretty well with the LDL particle number. Not perfectly, but pretty well. There's been quite a bit of research looking at the LDL particle number and the NMR lipoprotein profile. Here's one article from arteriosclerosis, thrombosis, and vascular biology. And as we scroll down, it says relationships between incident cardiovascular disease and lipoprotein subclass measurements by NMR were evaluated. And the results down here, the conclusions say that small LDL, the size of LDL particles, and the greater number of LDL particles are related to incident coronary heart disease. And this was done in a female population. Another article here from the Journal of Clinical Lipidology, where they evaluated LDL particle number and risk of future cardiovascular disease. We'll scroll down here to the conclusion. They said in a large community-based sample, LDL particle number was a more sensitive indicator of low cardiovascular vascular risk than either the LDLC or non-HDLC, suggesting a potential clinical role for LDL particle number as a goal of LDL management. All right, so let's look at a few of my patients or clients' NMR results, and I'll show you what we're actually looking for here. And so we'll take a look at Violet first. Obviously, I'm not going to use real names here, so we'll call her Violet. It was a 47-year-old female patient, and we can see that her LDL particle number, which is right here, came in at 1299. So this is a bit high. We want to see it under a thousand animals per liter. As this says here, the LDL cholesterol, LDL-C, is 131, so that is also a bit high. But again, I'm not as concerned about that number as the LDL particle number. Same thing here with the total cholesterol. You'll notice the HDL number looks pretty good at 85 and the triglycerides all the way down at 48. Now, what makes this a low cardiovascular risk profile is this small LDL particle, which you see right here. And you'll see it says less than 90. That's what we wanna see. When you've got under 100 small dense LDL particles, we know the liver is doing a great job at clearing the old LDL. It's not hanging around, getting oxidized, getting stuck in blood vessel walls, Causing problems. So even though her LDL cholesterol is a bit high and even the LDL particle number was a bit high, with this low small dense LDL particle, we really don't worry about it. And then when we scroll down and look at the LPIR score, the lipoprotein insulin resistance score, it comes in at less than 25. And that's exactly what we want. That's the optimal range. And that's based on these six lipid parameters here. 
here, the amount of large VLDL, small LDL, large HDL, and then the average sizes of those particles as well, which you see here. So these are all normal. This comes in as very low risk. And this is what we want to see. Again, so even with the high LDLC and the high total LDL particle number, not really worried about this. And this person had pretty healthy glucose and insulin sensitivity. When we scroll up and look at insulin levels, her insulin levels were 4.6. Glucose was 98, so a little high, and A1C a bit high there at 6.0. So not perfect, but not awful when it comes to metabolic health here and not a ton of insulin resistance. Next, let's look at somebody who's kind of at the other end of the metabolic health spectrum. This is a 67-year-old male patient, and you'll see similar LDL cholesterol level, similar LDLC. The LDL particle number is higher for sure. This is starting to get into the higher risk category here. When we look at triglyceride levels, 322, and then look at the small dense LDL particle number, 8. 62. So really high small LDL particle number. That means that they're not clearing those from the bloodstream. They build up, they get oxidized, damaged, stuck in blood vessel walls, start an inflammation process there and lead to problems. So not a good situation. When we look at the lipoprotein insulin resistance score, you can see it here, came in at 64. So that's way too high. And you can see there's four out of six of these lipoprotein parameters are out of balance. And by the way, here's the ApoB test. You can see how that correlates pretty well with the LDL particle number. Let's look at another one here, and this one's even worse. This is a 60-year-old male patient, and his LDL particle number is really high. Look at this, 2,113. That's a huge number. HDL down to 35, triglycerides 284. And look at the small, dense LDL particles, 1,632. So this is a major sign of fat in the liver, liver insulin resistance, metabolic dysfunction, and of course he was diabetic, type 2 diabetic. But look at the LDL cholesterol, only 112. Now this still gets flagged as high, especially in someone with type 2 diabetes, but 112 with an LDL particle number of over 2,000. So you wouldn't necessarily suspect this type of finding with the LDL cholesterol level of of just over 100. Now here's the LPIR score. It came in at 77, so another really high reading. Five out of six of these lipid parameters are out of balance, so major issue here. All right, let's look at another one here. This is a 59-year-old female, and we're seeing a higher LDL cholesterol here, but look at the LDL particle number, 1,500 plus triglycerides of 142. So some people might say that that's normal. We consider that to be elevated. Really anything over 100 is elevated from a metabolic health perspective. And then the small dense LDL particles, 510. The lab doesn't flag this, but anything over 500 is high. And really, as you saw in the other client, it should be less than 100 to be optimal or less than 90 is what it recorded there. Again, when we look at the lipoprotein insulin resistance, score. Here it is. Came in at 51. So again, way too high. It should be less than 25 optimally. Two of the lipoprotein parameters out of balance. And then I'll show you just a few other things here. When we go up and look at the insulin reading, insulin came in at 13.8. So that's very high. It should be right around five fasting. And then CRP, which is the inflammation marker, that came in at 4.39. That should be less than one.
run. So inflammation, insulin resistance, all of these things tend to track with each other. Here's the interesting thing, though, that when we look at the glucose, her glucose was 96, so just above normal. We like to see it between 76 and 92. Low to mid 80s is considered optimal. And then the A1C, 5.9. A lot of doctors would consider that pretty good. We like to see A1C around five to five and a half. So a lot of metabolic dysfunction and insulin resistance, even though the blood sugar and A1C here weren't that high. I'll go through a few more with you here. This is a 71-year-old female, LDL particle number 2,353. So again, really high. The LDL cholesterol is 140. So again, not sky high here either, but definitely considered elevated. Really high triglycerides, 446, suppressed HDL, high total cholesterol, and then look at the small, dense LDL particles. That's a major red flag, 1,500 small, dense particles. The liver here is super congested, jammed up, filled with fat, and insulin resistant. Lipoprotein insulin resistance score, 72, and 6 for 6 on the lipoprotein particles being out of balance. When we go up and look at insulin, again, 13.3. High insulin level should be right around five. And don't let this fool you, by the way, this super wide range that the labs use. Fasting insulin should be right around five. If it's over 10, that's a major issue. Homocysteine levels are high. That should be under 10. CRP should be under one. So inflammation, insulin resistance. And then I'll show you another one that looks pretty good. We do have some that come in normal too, by the way, but this one is pretty good. An LDL particle number of 1060, LDL-C just over 100, nice high HDL, low triglycerides. I mean, optimal triglycerides under 100. The small dense LDL particles 260, so not perfect, but under 500, so in that acceptable range. And then here again, we have that LPIR score of less than 25 with none of these abnormal. When we go a little bit higher and we look at insulin, the insulin came in at 6.9. So again, not perfect, but not over 10. And the CRP 0.3, so very little inflammation there homocysteine is under 10. So this lab report looks a lot better. All right, guys. So hopefully you can see the value of having the NMR lipoprotein profile test done. This is something we do as part of our executive metabolic health evaluation. If you want to learn more about that, there's a link in the description for this video below. I'm also going to link up an article here written by my friend, Dr. David Jockers, which talks all about the NMR test and some of the benefits but this really needs to be done as part of a larger lab package and evaluation. So you can get a sense of what's going on. Look at things like insulin resistance, inflammation. We do ApoB as well and lipoprotein little a as part of that evaluation. And we also want to check the health of the fat cells with adipokines, other inflammation markers. So again, this standard lipid panel is really just not enough. If you really want to understand your risk, you have to look at the fractionated lipid particles, at least have an ApoB test done. But looking at the LDL particles and the small dense particles is even better. If you want to learn more about that, check the description below, click the link, and I'll tell you how you can get the executive metabolic health evaluation done for yourself or your family members as well. All right, I hope you found this helpful. I'm Dr. Brian Mole, the diabetes coach, and I'll be back with another video soon. Take care.